Well, he was a head counselor at the boys' camp, and I was a head counselor at the girls' camp. And they had a social one night, and he walked across the room. I thought he was coming to talk to my friend Maxine, because people were always crossing rooms to talk to Maxine. But he was coming to talk to me, and he said, I'm Ben Small of the Coney Island Smalls. At that moment, I knew. I knew the way you know about a good melon. A man came to me and said, I found a nice girl for you. She lives in the next village, and she is ready for marriage. We were not supposed to meet until the wedding, but I wanted to make sure. So I sneaked into her village, hid behind a tree, watch her washing the clothes. I think if I don't like the way she looks, I don't marry her. But she looked really nice to me. So I said, OK, to the man. We get married. We married for 55 years. Hello everyone, hope you are having a great night with your small group. Uh, we are in this series called Heart and Soul, and the whole series is based off of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. He, he said this, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first commandment, and second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. So this whole series is about how we relate with other people. Jesus wants us to have healthy relationships. So week one, if you missed it, Natasha talked about how having a healthy relationship starts with having a healthy relationship with Jesus, and that makes every other relationship better. Week two, we talked about the purpose of dating. How dating is not just for fun, but the purpose of dating is actually to help find the person that we choose to marry. So tonight, I wanna to start our small group time by asking this question. Do you believe everyone has a soulmate? So whether you said, yes, I believe there is one soulmate out there for me, or you said, no, I don't believe in that hokey pokey, it doesn't matter, I don't have the right answer for you. I hope it got you thinking though about some of the characteristics of the kind of person that you would like to end up marrying. You might actually already have a list put together. You're like, I want somebody who's smart, tall, kind, driven. They like long walks on the beach. They have blue eyes and they like cats or no, no dogs um, or hyperallergenic cats, if that's a thing. Or you might be listening and you're like, I have never thought about any characteristics of anybody like that I want to end up with. And you're just like, I'm going to go with the flow. Either way, the Bible clearly says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 15, that as a believer, if you call yourself a Christ follower, we're not supposed to team up or align our lives with unbelievers. So I'm going to read that verse for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 15 says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? You might be listening to this and think to yourself like, that's really harsh or that's judgmental. Um, but God isn't saying that we should treat unbelievers as lesser than or that we should ignore them or judge them. God is saying, though, that we should align our lives with people that are walking toward the same destination. If you had a car or your parents have a car um, and you had one wheel that was out of alignment, the three other wheels were pointed straight while the, the one other wheel was pointed at an angle, even if it's just one degree off. If you drive that car with the wheel that is out of alignment, Eventually, your suspension will start to, to fall apart, your tire will become bald, um, your fuel economy will go down, and you'll accrue thousands of dollars worth of repairs if you don't get the alignment 
done. And the same is true in our life. If we align our life with people that are headed in a different direction, even if it's a slight direction change, one degree off can make the biggest difference. So God is encouraging us through this scripture to align our lives with those that are closest with us that are headed in the same direction. So often that we focus on aligning our lives with uh, people that are intellectually the same or emotionally or socially or physically, you know, compatible with us. And we forget to align our lives spiritually. But spiritual alignment impacts all those other things that I just listed off. If we're spiritually out of alignment with somebody that we're walking closely with, it will negatively affect every one of those areas. It's kind of a big deal. We need to be wise in who we align our lives with. The book of James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and He will give it to you. He won't rebuke you for asking. So when is the last time that you prayed and asked God to give you wisdom? Maybe for you, it's been a while. Maybe you've never decided to do that. I just challenge you, try it. Ask God, man, God, Give me wisdom. Help me have wisdom in making friends and, and making, making good friendships. Sometimes we make decisions solely based off of our feelings, only to realize that later on that we had made the wrong decision. And if you deny this, then you're probably living in denial. All of us have done that before. We've made decisions based off, based off of feelings. And God wants us to grow from our mistakes. He doesn't want us to keep repeating the same mistakes and never grow. He wants us to grow. So ask God for wisdom in your relationships. To end our time in small group tonight, we're going to do things a little different. I want you to get a Bible, and if you don't have a Bible you can share together with your, your friends in your small group, get a Bible, open up the book of Proverbs chapter 3, and read together those 35 verses, um, and write down a list of 10 qualities, behaviors that you should look for in a close friend. And then share with each other why those characteristics matter to you. All right, everyone, I hope you all had some good discussion tonight going over Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, we're going to close by praying. So would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for our time tonight. We thank you for the friendships that we're forming. We thank you that you're calling us to grow. You're pushing us beyond our mistakes and helping us be intelligent in our relationships. I pray, God, that you would help us all just grow in our relationships uh, today, tomorrow, and, and for the next season of our life. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.